there he went in and I got about 10 feet from the door so I see that I couldn't get in and I walked over to where Marlon and Brant were and uh, Brant said John I didn't do it Marlon done it I said well somebody done it he said Marlon done it John I didn't do it the atmosphere in the courtroom at that time that was uh like a lot of talking and a lot of excitement and people coming in and out, especially the day that Mamie showed up. It was everybody, the reporters was running and hollering that uh, Mamie Bradley is here. What uh, do you intend to do here today? Uh... To answer any questions that might that the uh, attorneys might ask me to answer. To the how best. Do you think that, uh, how do you think you could possibly be a help to them? I don't know, I mean, just by answering whatever questions that they ask me. Uh, do you have any evidence bearing on this case? I do know that this is my son. I remember the first day of the trial. Every window was filled with a father and his son or sons. And as I would come up the steps, they would aim the guns at me and they would pull the triggers and the little caps would pop and they would say bang, bang, bang. And the fathers, they thought this was the cutest thing. And the little guys were just firing away. Well, you know, the hair on, the, on my neck and down my back was just standing straight. It was a frightening experience. The reporters who were there were shocked and kind of astonished at finding this situation in which it seemed that everybody, the people in the town, knew that these men had murdered this Negro boy. Uh, that, of course, was the term at the time. Uh, and at the same time, they did not want the murderers to be punished. I mean, that was the, the sort of the civic <laughs> attitude. There was great hostility to the reporters who were, as the local people put it, making a big thing of this. The highlight of the trial so far has been the dramatic testimony of Uncle Moe's right. In court, he dramatically pointed at the two defendants, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milan, and said that they were the two men who came to his house on August the 28th and took the boy away. Old, old Moe said he never saw the boy alive again. It may have been one of the most moving moments of the trial when Moses Wright stood as straight as an arrow and spoke clearly and firmly uh, his testimony that indeed these were the men who had taken the boy from his house. He stood up, he pointed his fingers at him, said, that's him, which pointed at Myla. And that was, uh, oh my, that was, a, that was quite a moment then. Because you had the graphs, you had the people rumbling and grumbling, and we later found out that blacks didn't do that in Mississippi. He was willing to put himself at risk. Uh, he was not going to lie. He was not going to back down. He was not going to be intimidated. And you, you had to really admire the courage of somebody who, despite being brought up in that culture, and, and that culture really of slavery, would defy the mores by insisting on telling the truth. You got to remember that back in those days, it was suicide almost for a black man, a black person, to go in a courtroom talking about testifying against a white man because the whole room, the whole court was white. Ruby Hurley, Amzie Moore, and Medgar Evers at the trial. They came to the trial every day 
Sometimes uh, Amzi Moore and Medgar were out looking for witnesses, or Medgar was busy escorting Moses Wright to and from the courtroom safely because his life was being threatened every minute. Medgar was the one who actually was on, on the scene and went to, went to money and went to places trying to get information on it. Now, Ruby Hurley, like, and uh, this is not going to think nice from Ruby, because Ruby, like most of the big shot in WACP folks, they sat back in their IRA office in Atlanta, New York, and did nothing but direct. But uh, Amzie Moore joined Metcalf and went and investigated, and they the one who had taken all the, the chance of being killed themselves. attorneys have told us that the new state witnesses, and they have also questioned, will talk about hearing drones from a shed. Is that correct? Yes, they will. Will that definitely establish the time and the place of the actual crime? It won't establish the time and place of the actual murder, but it will connect the defendants with the crime. Did any of these witnesses see the defendants at the scene of the shed? Yes, one of them. When he called me to take the stand, and I took the stand, and then they asked me these questions, asked me questions about uh, OK, uh, about the, uh, the one that did the murder, did the killing. Do you see the, say, uh, do you see him in there in court? I said, yeah, which is in here. I said, yeah. He said, would you go there and point him out? You smile him, and this is Brian. They were sitting right there. What they did to me when I was on the stand was just unconscionable. They tried to make me confess that I had conspired with others to uh, get double indemnity on Emmett's five cent and 10 cent policies. When Carolyn Bryant made her testimony, I was not in the courtroom. They had me in another room. I, they didn't want me influenced by the witness, I guess. But when I heard the story, I knew for two reasons that that was a lie. Number one, Emmett's speech impediment under stress would not allow him uh, to get these things out. And number two, the respect that I had uh, put into him for womankind and for mankind, he just wouldn't come off that way. When I saw the antics that were going on in the courtroom, I could tell that everything was against us. And when the jury retired to render their verdict, I noticed that the black people who were lining the walls and the backs of the room, they were quietly leaving the courtroom. And I knew then that they knew we were not going to get a guilty verdict. And I said to my party, it's time for us to go. Congressman Diggs said to me, and miss the verdict? I said, this is one you don't want to hear. The verdict is not guilty. To satisfy me, they agreed to leave. And I guess about 45 minutes away from the courtroom, the verdict came in not guilty. How do you folks feel now that it's all over? Roy, how about you? I'm just glad it's over with. J.W.? I am too. Uh, Mrs. Bryant. Uh, I feel fine. How about you, Mrs. Milan? Did you expect this verdict? Well, I was hoping for it. 